Now, Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes, is proud to present Gun Smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. It's easy to do your whole tribe a big favor, Mother. Just pour every big and little Indian in your camp a breakfast bowl full of post toasties. Post toasties, you know, are the heat good cornflakes. <coughs> They're the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Fresh as fresh can be. Say, post-toasties are crackling crisp. Sweet kernel corn flavor, toasted. That's post-toasties. Post-toasties are packed with nourishment, too. A bowl of post-toasties with sugar and milk helps your big braves and little Indians start the day right. Get post-toasties soon. And now, gun smoke. Starring William Conrad. here looking for you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, hello. My name is Brant, Marshal. I and my son got a ranch up in the South Fork of the Solomon. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Brant? Well, uh, I ain't no ways responsible, you understand. It's been kind of uh, put on me, you might say. Oh? Huh? <laughs> what has? Well, Marshal, the, well, the engine started it. Hey, they was riding for horses just a couple of days ago. And they'd have got them and probably me, too, but for this kid they had along. A kid? Yeah. And he tried to come in ahead of the rest of the Indians, and he showed himself too soon as what happened. My son saw him in time to warn me, and we put up a standoff fight, and the Arapahoes didn't get a single horse. Well, what's the trouble, then? We got the kid. He's still there, wilder than a deer. He got shot in the leg a little. We brought him into the house after. Uh, I want to know what to do with him, Marshal. Oh. Well, uh, how old's the boy, Mr. Brandt? Hard to say. I bet he's uh, 12 or under. That's pretty young to be on a raiding party. Yeah, it sure is. But he's awful wild. He's tried to kill me twice already. Well, then why don't you turn him over to a reservation somewhere? They'll take care of him. Well, I can't do that, Marshal. It wouldn't have him. Why not? Well, he ain't an Indian. He's a white boy. A white boy? Sure acts like an Indian, though. I think he's been living with them Arapahoes a long time. That's what I think. Well, I don't know what I can do about it, Mr. Bryant. Uh, one thing is sure, Marshal, I can't keep him no more. And it don't seem right, you know, for a white boy to go back living among them Arapahoes. No. So you got to come up there with me and do something about him. Oh, but Mr. Bryant, I'm a U.S. Marshal. I'm hired to keep the peace, not to play nursemaid to orphans. Yeah. You were the only man I've heard of around here that I thought might help that boy. Well, if you want, you want. I'll just run him off into the prairie, I guess. All, all right. All right, Mr. Brandt. We'll ride back with you in the morning. <laughs> See nobody around, Mr. Brand. No, no, my son will be out with the cattle this time of day. I told him I locked that kid in the potato cellar when he had to leave the house. Is that it over there? That's it. He'll be in there. 
Sure. Uh, just open the door, Marshal. Maybe you'll come out. All right. Uh, Chester, grab him if he runs, huh? Yes, sir. And watch out for him. He'll do anything, that kid. Hey, kid. Come on out. Stand back now. Well, look at him. You'd hardly know he was a white boy, Mr. Dillon. Hello, son. You've come to kill me, haven't you? Oh, my goodness. Nobody's going to kill you, son. We're here to help you, that's all. <laughs> you look pretty weak to me. Is it that hole in your leg, or haven't they been feeding you? He won't eat, Marshal. At least he wouldn't when I left. You been eating, kid? No. See what I mean? It's easier to be tortured on an empty stomach. Oh, now, son, nobody's going to torture you. Nobody's going to kill you. I'd just like to have a look at that leg where you got hit. I'm all right. Come on. Uh, let's go in the house and see for sure, huh? No. I... Well, he's fainted. I got him. Oh, the poor little kid. Why haven't you done anything about this bullet in his leg, Brent? I tried, Marshal. He wouldn't let me near it. Tried to bite me. Well, he can't fight now. Come on, show me where to put him. I carried the boy into the house, laid him out on a bed, and went to work. He came to in the middle of it, but he didn't move a muscle or utter a sound. The bullet wasn't buried very deep, and I dug it out cleaned the wound as best I could. When it was over, I got some strong tea down him, and then he went to sleep. A couple of hours later, I noticed he'd waked up, and I went over to the bed. You fixed my leg? Sure, of course I did. Why? Well, you might have died if I hadn't. A wound like that gets infected. Rappahoes don't care if their prisoners die. Well, you're not a prisoner here. Yes, I am. Uh, look, what's your name, anyway? Yorkie. Well, is that all? It's all I remember. Is that what the Arapahoes told you? Yes. They won't give me another name till I'm a brave. Well, Yorkie's a white man's name. Where are your parents? Killed in a raid, they told me. I've been a Rappahoe ever since. Uh, what was your father's name, do you know? I was too young. Well, then how come you remember English so well? An old man of the tribe makes me talk every day. I don't know where he learned, but he says it'll come to use later when I'm a brave. In our wars against the white man. You're a white man, Yorkie. Yes, but I live with the Arapahoes. Well, you're dead, but you're back among your own people now. You gotta learn to live a different life. No. Wait. You mean you want to go back with the Indians? First, I have to make a big coup. Make a big coup? What for? I'll be killed if I don't. What are you talking about? I allowed myself to be seen and expose the raiding party. So I'll be killed if I don't make a coup and return with a scalp or some horses. You? A kid like you? Unless you kill me first. Oh, Yorkie, if I was going to kill you, why did I take that bullet out of your leg? I don't know. Well, nobody's going to kill you. Now, you just get that out of your head. And you're not going to kill anybody either or steal any horses. So forget about it. If I make a big coup, my mistake on the raid will be forgiven. And I'll be the youngest brave in the whole tribe. Well, we'll argue about that later. But what were you doing on this raid in the first place? A white boy must prove himself many times. It's harder than for an Indian. That's why they let me come. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got quite a problem, haven't you, Yucky? But uh, right now, why don't you go back to sleep for a while, huh? I'll have some soup for you when you wake up.
Well, good morning, Mr. Bryant. Good morning, Chester. <clears throat> Marshal. Good morning. Your son left a few minutes ago. He said he wouldn't be back till evening. Yeah, and I ought to be out with him. We're all through, but I'll cook you some eggs. Oh, just coffee for me. All right, sir. Well, what are you going to do about that kid, Marshal? Well, there's not much I can do, Brant. You can't leave him here. Uh, well, I didn't bring him here. Here you are. Uh, Marshal, I'm serious. Even if it was an ordinary kid, I got no way to raise him. And this one is is bad. I told you, he's been after me twice already. Well, he needs a scalp to take back. It's a matter of life or death with him. He ain't taking mine. You really think he might kill somebody, Mr. Dillon? Well, left alone, yes. But he's so young. Well, I heard Billy the Kid killed a man when he was 12. Age doesn't seem to matter much. Well, can't you talk him out of it? Show him it's wrong? Oh, I've tried, but Yorkie thinks like an Indian. He doesn't know anything about the white man's world. Yeah. How's he feeling this morning, anyway? Well, I'd hoped his fever would be down, but it isn't. He needs a doctor, that's what. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Brant, is this one of your guns? Well, where'd you get it? Yorkie had it when I went in there this morning. But he was too weak to use it. Well, I told you he's a bad one, Marshal. He'll kill someone yet. All Yorkie understands right now is kill or be killed, Brent. Uh, if you got a wagon, we'll take him into Dodge. Say, what goes on at your house at breakfast? Well, you can take it from me. The best thing that can go on your breakfast table is Post Toasties. Yes, sir, Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes. Those golden crisp cornflakes are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. You know how to prove it? Well, just pour out breakfast bowlfuls of Post Toasties for your whole tribe. Then watch how they enjoy them. Post Toasties are crisp and tasty. From the first bite down to the last spoonful, that sweet kernel corn flavor makes your breakfast. So always ask for Post Toasties, the heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. Remember, Post Toasties is one of the famous triple wrap post cereals Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Now back to Gunsmoke. On the drive into Dodge, Yorkie never moved or never said a word. I looked back at him from time to time and tried to put myself in his place. Here was a boy whose only experience of life had been with a warlike tribe of Indians, a tribe which he couldn't even go back to without a white man's scalp or some stolen horses. Now, this in itself would be a problem for a grown man. But little Yorkie also called himself a prisoner, sooner or later to be killed. It was no wonder that during the next few days, as he lay on the couch in Doc's office, he watched us with wild, restless eyes. In spite of his obvious courage, I think he was a little frightened. And when Doc was suddenly called out on a case in the country for several days, I had an idea. And I sent Chester to find Kitty. You want me to nurse him? Is that it, Matt? Well, partly, but also I thought maybe you could talk to him a little. It's... Uh... Oh, it's hard for him to trust a man. I know. Chester told me about it. Yeah, he'll be well enough pretty soon to get into trouble. Bad trouble. I'll do what I can. Where is he, in the front room? Yeah, on Doc's couch. And, uh, Kitty, uh, try to get him to eat something, huh? <laughs> I haven't had much luck. All right. But you stay here. Yeah, sure. Hello, Yorkie. Who are you? My name's Kitty. I'm going to take care of you. 
Why? Because you're sick. Wouldn't you take care of somebody who's sick? Not an enemy. <laughs> we're not enemies, Yorkie. Even if we were, I'd take care of you. Prisoners get well by themselves, or they die. Not around me, they don't. Anyway, you're not a prisoner. You can leave any time you want to. Is that the truth? Of course it is. Unless you do something wrong, like killing or stealing. But let's not talk about all that. I want to know about you. All sorts of things. What it was like with the Arapahoes, or what you remember about when you were younger. I won't tell any secrets. I don't want to know any secrets, Yorkie. But maybe you can tell me... Well, did you have a mother in the tribe? Tell me about that. I'm a white boy. They've never let me have a mother. Anyway, I was big enough I didn't need one. Did you ever want one, Yorkie? I don't know. I, I guess so, sometimes. It's better to have a mother. Mine was killed in a raid when they found me. I know. Do you remember her at all? No. Sometimes I think I do. Sometimes when I'm asleep, that is. What do you remember about her then? I don't know. Just a feeling, I guess. Sort of like being warm. Is that what it's like? Yeah. I think that's what it's like, Yorkie. Very much like that. I'm hungry, Kitty. Would you let me have something to eat? Of course I will, Yorkie. Of course I will. Kitty spent as much time with Yorkie as she could manage. And whenever she'd been with him, he always seemed calmer and less frightened. And we began to have hopes that maybe the boy would take to his new life after all. Chester and I were busy, and except for taking some food up now and then, we turned Yorkie's care over to Kitty completely. When will Doc be back, Mr. Dillon? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Chester. He sent word he'd have to be out there another day. I guess Ms. Taylor's been mighty sick. Mm. You think maybe Yorkie could just live with Doc? Ah, uh, I don't know what to do with him, Chester. Well, we sure got to do something with him. Yeah. Where's Yorkie? What? Well, he's upstairs, Kitty. Have you been up there today? Have you seen him? Uh, no, I... I thought you were with him. I couldn't get here till now. Yorkie's gone, Matt. What? I'll go take a look. I've already searched the place. He isn't there. Well, let's look in the street, Chester. Maybe somebody's seen him. You better find him. That's all I can say. Yeah, we'll find him, Kitty. Don't worry. Maybe he's got hold of a gun. Yeah, I hope not. Anyway, if he's as smart as I think he is, he'll locate a horse to get away on first. Maybe a couple of them. Doggone it. Just when I was beginning to think he was going to settle down a little. Uh, you never know. But I still got faith in that kid somehow, Chester. Now, uh, here, let's cross over to Moss Grimmick's stable there, huh? All right, sir. There's Moss now, just inside there. Yeah. Moss? Oh, Marshal, Chester. Oh, Moss? Yeah, I was going to come see you, Marshal. Oh? That kid you brought in the other day, I caught him trying to steal one of my horses. You got Yorkie? Is that his name? Where is he, Moss? Back here. He put up quite a fight for a sick boy, Marshal. A little wildcat. I had to tie him up finally. I throwed him in the saddle room there. He's sure a mean one. There he is, little devil. He'll hang yet. Give me your knife, Chester. Oh, don't untie him, Marshal. I'll handle him, Moss. Here you are, Mr. Dillon. Ah. Yorkie, I'm sorry this happened. Uh, I'd have given you a horse if you'd asked me. Ah, there. I wasn't going to steal him. And what was you doing riding him out of that stall, young fellow? Wait a minute, Moss. Hmm? Yorkie, 
you say you weren't going to steal him? No. Well, what were you doing, then? Kitty didn't come, and I got lonely. I don't know. Well, I... I think I do, Yorkie. You just wanted to be around something familiar, something you know. Isn't that right? I guess so. And you've lived with horses all your life. You know them pretty well. So you came over here. I wasn't going to steal them. I just wanted to get on them. You know, I half believe the boy, Marshall. He's telling the truth, Moss. Yorkie, I'm sorry I treated you rough. Why don't you tell me? You were going to kill me. Me? Kill anybody? A kid? Guess you don't know me very well. What are you going to do with me now? Well, uh, Doc will be back tomorrow, Yorkie. If he says it's okay for you to stay up, well, you can. In the meantime, Kitty will be there. All right. Tell you what, Yorkie. You get well, you come over here. I'll give you a horse to ride. You will? Sure. I got lots of horses. You can take your pick. What if I steal them? <laughs> I've had horses stole before. I don't understand you. He trusts you, Yorkie. We all do. You shouldn't. You shouldn't trust anybody. Oh, maybe not, but we do anyway. Uh, Moss, I, I got an idea. No. I, uh, I don't suppose you could use a stable boy around here, huh? Some kid who really knows horses and who's used to hard work. Well, I don't have much money, Marshal. If I could feed him a little and maybe fix him in bed in the saddle room here. Of course, a good boy's like a good horse. There's bound to be some hot blood in him. Try to lift my hair, I'll whop him good. Is that clear, young fella? You're talking about me? Of course they're talking about you, Yorkie. One thing, I can't hire nobody less than he has a whole name. Well, Yorkie don't know his last name. Well, call him anything. Uh, uh, Kelly. Kelly, that's a good name. Yorkie Kelly? Grimmick and Kelly. Yeah, sounds all right to me. You people get out of here now. I got work to do. When Doc says you're fitting Yorkie, you come back. I'll be back, Moss. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. Say, exciting things happen to breakfast when there's sugar crinkles at every place. Sure, new sugar crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. You know why? Sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that aren't sweet enough. Sugar crinkles, every golden crisp nugget of them, is just right sweet. So try starting your day off just right with new sugar crinkles. And don't forget... When you're listening to the radio or watching television, sugar crinkles make great snacks. From the bowl or from the pack, for your breakfast or a snack, sugar crinkles are more fun than a circus. Try sugar crinkles soon. They're the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. So better get several packages. <laughs> Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Richard Beals, Larry Dobkin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, spend some time on a road ranch during his fight to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.
listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, the two delicious coffees that let you sleep, bring you Sanka Salutes. And this is Whit Elliott transcribed, saluting our people of the week, the everyday people who help make America an even nicer place in which to live. This is for all fathers listening in. Got a question for you, Dad. Suppose you got a hurry call from home saying that a certain stork which had been hovering around your house for weeks finally had started coming in for a landing. Can you imagine yourself stopping for anything? No. Well, then you pull up a chair, Dad, and hear all about a Navy vet named Charles Yule. You see, this week, Charles was rushing home so he could get his wife to the hospital in time to have their very first child. But on the way, Charles saw a terrible thing. A woman had gone off a bridge. A woman was floundering in the freezing water of a New York City river. Well, Charles Yule knew a thing or two about the horrors of people fighting death in the water. During the war, he'd rescued two drowning shipmates. And just a few years ago, he'd pulled a little girl out of the surf. Of course, now it was different. There was the stork. Charlie wavered, and then he made his decision. Into the water he dived. He reached the woman. He held her, and he saved her life. And then, of course, the hero dashed home. Well, fortunately, the stork had cooperated, and Daddy was able to greet his first son. And so tonight, Charles Yule stands in a hospital corridor and looks proudly through a glass at a little boy. He certainly set him a real example of manhood. And so to Papa Yule, a cooing, gurgling, sank a salute. And now hear the story of the men of the USS George E. Davis and a nine-year-old Italian war orphan named Maria Carmela Lavecchia. The Davis is an American destroyer escort, and about a year ago, the men aboard her decided to adopt Maria. They didn't know her. They'd never seen her. But they knew what kids like Maria were going through, so they, they filled out the papers and collected money. Enough for schooling, enough for food, even for her very first doll. And then, some time ago, they decided to give her the finest gift of all, a trip to America, a chance to see a decent and happy world, a chance to be just a little girl. Well, she's here now, and she's having the time of her life with her 200 fathers. And so, in her name, to the wonderful young men of the George E. Davis, this very proud Sanka salute. In a moment, a story about a lonely, forgotten hero. But first, say, what is it you look for most in a coffee? Is it a full-bodied flavor, or is it the ease of preparation you get from an instant coffee? Well, you know you get both of those great advantages, plus a third in the instant Sanka coffee. That third advantage... Instant Sanka lets you sleep. Yes, the only coffee in the world that gives you all three advantages is the new Instant Sanka coffee. Taste it made hot and black and good and strong, and you'll know right off it has the extra rich flavor you want. Instant Sanka is made instantly right in the cup, whether you're making one cup or a dozen, and it lets you sleep because 97% of the sleep-disturbing caffeine has been removed. Yes, drink Instant Sanka whenever you please, and it won't keep you awake. And now you can buy Instant Sanka in the big new economy size jar and save money. So drink Instant Sanka, the only coffee that combines extra rich flavor with instant ease and lets you sleep. Say, would you have done what Mr. Orville Ratliff did down in Louisville this week, and when it was all over, would you feel the way he does? Well, Mr. Ratliff was a bystander when a car crashed and the gas tank exploded. He didn't know the man inside the car. The whole thing wasn't his affair. But he went into those flames, and he pulled out the man, and he saved his life. The result? Orville Ratliff went to the hospital severely burned in terrible pain. The other man, fortunately, was hardly hurt at all. And up to the middle of this week, at least, do you know how many visitors this hero has had? Zero. Not one. He might be bitter, this brave but lonely man, but he isn't. He says when the pain allows him to talk, I'd do it again. How about somebody going in and seeing Orville Ratliff for you and me? and say to him, for you and me, here, sir, is a Sanka salute. I'll be back next week when Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, both delicious and both caffeine-free, will again present Sanka salutes. In the meantime, this is Win Elliott suggesting you try Sanka. You'll love it, and you'll sleep. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>